everyone welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new my name is Sydney I always get so nervous when I record with my face um, if you follow me on my other channel imperfect plans you know I always just show my hands because I'm doing planner videos on my desk but I always get so nervous when I'm showing my face y'all I don't know why I just I don't know okay anyway so God has actually put a word on my heart. I feel like that he wants the body of Christ to hear. I'm not saying this is like some prophetic message and he said, say this exact words, this and this, but he's been putting something on my heart that I feel like is going to be edifying to the body of Christ, um, beneficial, something that we all need to hear. And hopefully we all can start adhering to, including myself. So I want to start out by saying that earlier this week, I started watching, um, a new YouTube channel. Some young girl who is starting a podcast on YouTube. And I think early, I'm pretty sure earlier this week, she only had like 200 subscribers or something around that line. Um, not that that matters, but it's important to what I'm going to say later. But she only had like 200 subscribers. Now, I think the week isn't even over yet. And she already has, I think like over 2000 or something. So I know God is blessing her, but every single video she was putting out this week, or even videos that she had posted in the past that I just saw this current week um, was speaking to me, literally directly to me. It was almost as if God was speaking to me through her, using her as a vessel. And it's so beautiful when he does that, y'all. But everything she would post about or that she would speak about in her podcast um, spoke to my heart so much. But um, I thank God wants me to put this message out because... I felt him putting something on my heart this morning about, um, uh, he, I kept hearing the confessing Christian, like us as Christians need to start confessing more, um, obviously confessing our sins to God, but also to each other, the body of Christ, because what is the scripture? Um, oh, y'all bless me. I am so bad with memorizing scriptures, but confess ye sins one to another so that we can pray for each other. Um, because the prayers of a righteous person availeth much. I'm obviously butchering the scripture a whole lot, but that's pretty much the gist of what it's saying. And God was putting that on my heart. So I went throughout the rest of my day. I started doing some cleaning, laundry. I did my hair. And when I do my hair, I always like to put on a podcast. So I searched for one to, um, to listen to. And of course, that young lady posted another video today. And it was so funny because the beginning of the intro, she said that, um, you know, before you guys see the video I'm going to play, this is something I recorded months ago, but I guess she thought it wasn't good enough to post then. Um, but God is telling her to put it out today for some reason. And she literally had just put it out like maybe 20 minutes ago when I had pulled my YouTube um, account up to look for a podcast. So I listened to the video. And of course, it was exactly what God was putting on my mind about confessing our sins. She focused a lot on confessing our sins to God because he already knows our hearts, but he needs to hear our confession. Um, so that we can get it out and he can start to heal because his power is made perfect in our weakness. She talked about that scripture and she also talked about confessing our sins to each other. Um, she gave a little testimony, a story where, um, I mean, you guys can watch it. I'll put her name here. Um, I don't know if I'll put her name in the description box. I don't want her to think I'm trying to like hop on her, you know, on her um, channel or her followers or anything. But I do want to put her channel here so you guys can look at it because... I think she is really being used by God right now. And it's so important now. And it's a lot of Christian content out here right now. And not all of it, I feel like, is edifying for us or I don't know. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think she is someone who really is being used by God the right way. She is humble. She is kind. Um, she shows love when she speaks um, and when she even offers some type of correction to the body of Christ. And that's really important. But anyway, I feel like God is really putting on like the reason why I don't think there's a specific reason as to why me and her are connecting a lot with certain things God is saying. I really think God is putting this message on the body of Christ overall. It's just up to like, do you guys hear it or not? You know, depending on how your relationship is with God, are you reading your word? Are you fasting? Are you humbling yourself to really hear from him? Then maybe you can hear the message. But I really think it's important for all of us, y'all, to start confessing one just as she talks about in her video are we confessing our sins to God that's the most important I'm not a believer that um you have to confess your sins to a priest or your pastor to be forgiven no you gotta confess your sins to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for the remission of our sins and rose back up on the third day 
We have to confess to him so that he can um, forgive us. He knows our hearts already. He knows the things we're suffering from. But when we bring it to him, he can um, he can really heal us. And he can, I feel like, see, this goes back to what he kept putting on my mind. You can't, you can only heal what you don't hide. I'm telling you, for like the past couple of months, he's been putting that saying in my head. And I'm like, for what, God? Is there something you want me to do with that? Make a, a YouTube channel? Um, uh, start a pop? I don't know, whatever it is, but he kept putting that on my mind. And I think it's really important. That saying is so important because confession is not for God to know what we did. As I said, he already knows our hearts. It's for us, y'all. We have to confess to one get it out like how freeing is it to just release whatever we're dealing with like lord i'm struggling with envy right now I, every time i see somebody succeeding i'm looking at them like how come i'm not there yet how come i don't get that how come i'm not at that point in my life right now we all have been there we all have been to a point to where i mean i could say even worse things y'all like stuff that i don't want to you know i'm trying to keep this channel pg <laughs> it's a family oriented but i'm saying that we all have had thoughts or have struggled with sins that we've actually done that people will be shocked when they see us now you know like no way you dealt with that but I'm saying getting it out releasing it and just feeling that freeness of like God I know you already know what's on my mind right now but I need to release this to you I need to admit it to myself like hey I'm someone that does struggle with envy I struggle with addiction and it may not be um, drugs or alcohol but maybe I'm addicted to eating or um, ordering on DoorDash yeah I know y'all can relate <laughs> or um, ordering off of Amazon shopping whenever I get flustered and overwhelmed or sad or stressed depressed I want to go on Amazon and make myself feel better by shopping and spending money that I don't have right now I'm going into debt that all that's stuff that we need to confess we need to admit to ourselves what we're doing wrong or what we're struggling with so that we can heal Okay, the other thing he put on my heart to share is a dream he gave me. Actually, two different dreams. Um, I am a dreamer, and I know that's really controversial for some reason. I don't know. Some people say that God doesn't give people dreams anymore, or God doesn't speak through prophecies. And people, y'all, I don't know. I know that a prophecy is a message from God. God can always give someone a message specifically to that person. And he's done it for, um, for me before. Like, from other people, he's given them prophecies to give to me, and it has been spot on. I can get into that in another video, but yes, I do still believe that. I believe that God does speak to you in your dreams. I believe the enemy does give you dreams as well to deceive you. So I'm not saying that your dreams are always from God or sometimes they're not just, I don't know, thoughts in your mind from things you have, you know, done throughout your day or been through. But what I'm saying is that he does speak to me in my dreams and he wanted me to share a dream with you guys. So just to give you a little preface before I get into the dream, um, this was, a, say, a few months ago, and I was probably going through the hardest time in my life. I was dealing with a lot personally in my marriage, in my family. My father had just passed away um, from, um, I don't think I can say the word because I'm on YouTube, but he took his own life. Um, I had been, I'm telling you, the world was just throwing things at me left and right, left and right. And this is around the time where my relationship with God was probably the strongest it had ever been. I was getting to the point where I was fully trusting in him. I loved him. Even to the point when my father passed away, I had this, like, it just didn't even make sense the amount of peace and joy he gave me throughout the whole thing to where a lot of other people didn't understand it either. I didn't understand it. But shortly around this time, I was going through all this. God had been keeping me in perfect peace. But, you know, as the enemy does or just things that we go through in life, it keeps getting thrown at us back to back to back. And it got to one night where I was just so angry. I started screaming. I was yelling at God. I think I was just home with just me and my daughter that night. And I was so upset. My daughter wouldn't fall asleep. And I was angry at my circumstance, what I was going through, why God kept throwing things at me. Like, God, I understand that you have to. Um, I understand the scriptures when God says we have to lean not on our own understandings and how, um, things that we go through are essentially going to strengthen us, right? I understand that. But I also felt like I was just being like, God, do you, like, I know, you know, I'm strong in you. You have the strength to keep me up, right? When I'm weak, I understand that. But God, I can't take any more. I feel like I'm just not even going to make it just from how my heart, like, I feel like I'm going to have broken heart syndrome or something, like everything I'm dealing with. 
And I remember just yelling at God, screaming, getting out all my anger, just like, why are you doing this, God? Why? Don't you love me? I'm your daughter. I know I'm not perfect. I know I've done things in my past, but I'm here and I just want to surround myself with you. I want to please you, but I also I'm hurting and I'm struggling and I just need you to take this off of me. I was screaming, crying out to him. And that night, you know, I did feel a little convicted. I felt like, man, how disrespectful. Like, I'm really yelling at God. Like, I hope he don't strike me down, right? And that night, he gave me a dream. In the dream, I have no clue what the um, attack entailed. But I know I was attacked viciously to the point that at the end of the attack, I was laying on a dirt road with my clothes all ripped up. I had blood on my face. It was so bad that it felt like in the dream, it felt so real. It felt like I was, I was dying, like... There's no way I'm going to get back up right now. And I can't move. Every muscle in my body hurt, was in pain. And then all of a sudden, Jesus walked up. And I, I don't remember his face. I don't remember what he, you know, I just, I knew it was Jesus. Um, walked up and he looked down at me smiling and he reached down to grab my hand. And I felt like I can't even, I don't have no energy to do that. But just his presence there, I think just gave me all the energy I needed. So I reached my hand up and he lifted me up. As soon as he lifted me up, I felt like everything fell off. I was healed. There was no pain, no cuts, bruises. My clothes were new again. And he told me, the only thing I remember him saying is, my grace is sufficient for you. And then after that, my, hu my husband had walked up in the dream and my husband just looked new. His eyes were bright. His smile was just brand new. And God took my husband's hand, took my hand and kind of joined together, joined them together. And then he looked at us like and just smiled. And he didn't say anything, but it kind of seemed as though he was alluding to this is good. You guys come together. Stop all the mess and everything you're dealing with. Just this is what you need to do. Just hold hands, come together. And I'm pleased by this. And that's what I got from it. So I woke up and when I woke up from the dream, I just kept playing that scripture in my head. My grace is sufficient for you. One thing I'm going to tell y'all is that I'm horrible with scripture. I hate saying that out loud, but it's true. I'm horrible with scripture. You got to confess our sin. I mean, not our sins, but things we struggle with, just confess it. Even if it's something we're embarrassed about. I struggle with memorizing scripture. Even if I know the scripture and understand it, I struggle with knowing where the verse is, where it is in the Bible, all that. But whenever God gives me something, I just can't unplay it. It's like this: the Holy Spirit that's in me is bringing the scripture out of me if that makes sense so because me personally in my flesh y'all I pss, do not ask me to repeat no type of scripture you can give me a million dollars and I still be like uh I don't know but God will always bring it out of me and I kept repeating that scripture so I looked up the whole thing um and it's my grace is sufficient for you my power is made perfect in your weakness and um just a little background, it's about Paul. Paul was going through the hardest season in his life to the point he did the exact same thing I did, y'all. He was crying out to God, screaming like, please take this burden off of me, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't handle it. I'm literally going to die. I can't do this. And God told him that scripture, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. So God is going to give us trials, you guys. We have to confess it to him. And I feel like we're hard on ourselves whenever we come to God and we don't know what to say or we may be upset and angry. I don't want to say it's okay to disrespect your God and, you know, and to your God, our God, the God of this universe. It's it's not okay to, to just unleash whenever we feel like it because we want to. But I'm saying when we're at our lowest point and we feel like, I'm just angry, God. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I'm angry. I'm stressed. I'm frustrated remind yourself that you are you are coming to God in your frustrations. You're not turning away from him. You didn't, you know, say something so bad that's unforgivable and, you know, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm turning away from you, God. You're coming to him in your anger and your frustrations. And God knows our hearts. He can feel it. When we're in that much pain, he already knows it. Like the pain, I don't want to say pain. He's in as if God feels pain, but... He fills us. He fills our hearts. Jesus Christ was here with us on earth. He knows what the how what pain felt like and emotions and being tempted. Though he is God, he still knows those feelings. So he knows when he sees us in that much pain, it grieves him too, I'm sure. He doesn't want to feel that. He doesn't want us to feel that way. But y'all, we have to bring it to him. Come to God, even in your frustrations, even when you feel like, why do I keep struggling with this sin, with this same thing I keep dealing with. I don't know why I can't save money. I'm still dealing with my 
porn addiction, if you guys know what I mean, you know, um, or whatever it may be. I don't know. Y'all could be dealing with anything. Smoking, y'all know. Look, that is a huge addiction. Drugs, smoking, alcohol, something that when people beat it, amen to you, but it still is a, a lifelong struggle they, they suffer from. But I'm telling you, bring it to God. We need to start confessing our sins to each other. Another reason why it's so important to confess our sins is that so other believers, especially the new new Christians, the baby Christians, I guess you want to call them, or people that are new in their walk with God, they need to see the realness. I'm so tired of people coming in and then they see people who have been on their walk for a long time and they're like, oh, you don't understand what I'm going through. You've probably never smoked before. You've never done this because look at you. You're holier than thou. You do this and do that. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. To be honest, we can't really fault them for thinking that because us as Christians don't really confess the height of what we've been through. Um, I really want to pull it up, but in Psalms uh, 51, that's one of my favorite chapters, y'all. Psalms 51. Let me see if I can find it. Um, what tab is that? Should be a purple tab. Psalms. Oh, bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. Okay. Psalms 51. Here it is. Um, oh, it's a little hard for me to read because this ring light is like all in my face right now. But um, just to sum it up, I don't want to read the whole thing, but it's David after he, after the prophet Nathan told David that God saw what you did to um, Uriah. No, what's his name? The guy that he killed for Bathsheba. Yes. He, Nathan came up to him, told him that God saw you. And this is basically David confessing his sin to God and really humbling himself, bringing his whole heart to God out of just like despair. Like, I can't believe I hurt my God this much. I can't believe I sinned this hard. And what he is saying is that somewhere in here, he says something to the effect of what I'm going through, what I did, I want you to use that to help the next person. So find something good out of my sin, essentially. And I think that's what we need to do and stop hiding from what we've done and what we've been through. If anything, it should be a celebration. I know I'm not one to talk because there's so many things I've been through in my past. I still got to put out a testimony story, y'all. And I just feel like, why would I want to confess that? Everyone's going to think I'm not a real Christian or I'm fake or like, oh, you did something like that in your past? Oh, no way you can really love God. But that's not true. We know it's not true. But for some reason, it's like that really it's probably just our flesh our, and also that desire to want to look perfect. I mean, I feel like that's natural in the world that we live in. We're supposed to strive for perfection, but we're obviously we're never going to reach that. Um, be holy because I am holy. I'm always going to strive to be as holy as I can, but we're going to fall sometimes. And I think other people need to see that especially the non-believers that we potentially can convert to being a believer. They always see us Christians as these perfect little angels. They think they're so holy and they never do anything wrong. And as soon as one of us fall, they're like, oh, see, I told you, I told you they're not a real Christian. Look what they did. They were at a party getting drunk or they did this or I found out something in their past that they did. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. Us being Christians, we are coming to God because at least for me, I'm admitting that, look, I am fallen. I am wicked. Y'all, I feel like I've been on my walk with God for a long time. And just recently, I asked God to reveal things from my heart that I don't see. It's just one thing when you come to God and it's like, okay, let's stop partying. Stop getting drunk. Let's stop doing like the big things that are kind of obvious, but still hard at that time to turn from. But it's kind of obvious because it's in your face in the Bible. But there's other things where it's like things that are within our hearts that maybe it may not come off as obvious or they may, we may not be as vocal with it. Like for one thing, and I'll just say this, that um, one thing I have struggled with that I'm noticing that God is revealing to me is envy. And not in the sense that like, I'm like, ugh, like I'm vocally telling someone that I'm jealous of this or that and that people probably don't even notice it. But I get envious when I see people succeeding or at a certain place in their life in their walk with God or even just personally in their business or whatever it may be and I'm thinking like God I feel like I you know you say abide in you and you and me and and ask of it and it will be given to you so how come it hasn't been given to me yet am I doing something wrong first of all that scripture is a little bit out of context if you think that whatever you ask is there's going to be like a magical genie that will just snap his finger and you'll have it ask of it that's within his will for your life or for the body of Christ because it's not always just about us and that's the biggest thing I have been learning is that look 
when I bless you with something, say if I bless you with a podcast of a YouTube channel, the success of that is not just for you, Sydney. It's not, and I'm talking to myself, y'all. It's not just for me to, um, to have this successful YouTube channel and then now when I'm popping and I'm making all this money on YouTube and I can do this and that and just live my best life. It's not about that. God loves us all, not just each one of us. He loves us all individually, has his own unique relationship with us, but he loves the body of Christ and he's using us to help the rest of the body. So if he wants to make my YouTube channel successful and pop off, well, guess what? Maybe he needs the body of Christ to see whatever message I have right now. I'm going to benefit off of that because of course I'm going to be have a, a popular YouTube channel or podcast and now I may make some money off of it and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll reap the, the benefits, I will say. But it's going to be mainly for the edification of the body of Christ. And that's really important. Um, but the overall point of this video is just to say we got to start confessing our sins more. I think God is putting it on a lot of our hearts. I hope a lot of you guys are feeling it as well. Hopefully this was a confirmation. I did not plan this video at all. Usually I like to write out bullet points and everything. I wrote down two scriptures, which I can't even remember now because I didn't I have them on my phone, which I'm recording with. But it was seek ye first the kingdom of no, no, no. See, look, the one I already told y'all about. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. And then the confess ye sins one to another so that you will be forgiven or whatever it says. He put those two scriptures on my heart and said, just go with that and just talk. And I don't know, one, two, three, four, five people see this video. The message is for you. If you are a part of the body of Christ, again, I'm not saying I'm some prophetess and God said, say this exact word to these people. No, but he's been putting it on my heart to confess our sins more, to be more open and honest in the body of Christ. Let's just be real, y'all. Let's let loose. Let's let it not let loose now. Not like that. Don't take my words out of context. Context. What I'm saying is that let's free ourselves from the bondage of sin. Whatever we're dealing with, whatever we've been through in the past, whatever we're still struggling with, we're going to confess it to God first and foremost. And then we're going to confess it to, to each other. Don't just be telling people your business now just to gossip and for them to run and tell somebody else. Use discernment on who you're talking to. But I hope you have a family of um, of people in the body of Christ, uh, brothers, sisters at your church or I don't know, just friends, wherever that you can really speak to that will give you godly advice and support. We all need that. We really do. I'm a huge loner, but even I struggle at times when I, you know, find myself getting too secluded. But that's all, you guys. I don't want to let this video run on too long. I will say that I think that this is going to be a new series. What God put on my heart this morning, um, the Confessing Christian. And I think maybe each one, I'll talk about something that I'm struggling with. Like I told you, I struggle with um, envy a little bit. And, and that's one that's kind of hard to admit because people will judge you quick when you say you struggle with something like jealousy or envy. They're like, oh, oh, girl, I would never want to be your friend. Oh, see, every time somebody succeeds, you don't see it. But it's not like that. It's not like, oh, I don't want anyone else to succeed. Sometimes we're quick to just covet what the other person has because we think that we deserve it at this time or we're confused as to why we we're not deserving of that. And it's not always about that. Just because you don't have whatever you think you want, God has given you what you need. And one thing I did ask for a long time ago was peace and joy through all my circumstances. And when I tell you God, God has done it. He has given me that. And that is worth far more than money, success of uh, businesses or whatever else the world will throw at you. That is far more precious. I promise you that. So this will be a new series, I think. I'm going to start confessing little things here and there. I pray that one day I can build up myself to tell my testimony of everything I have done and been through in my life that most people will look at me and be like, girl, mm, 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 mm. some of y'all won't be judgy, but it's okay. It's all right because it's going to speak to somebody, somebody that feels inadequate or imperfect or not good enough to be a Christian or to love God or to be in his presence. And that's why Jesus came, y'all, for the redemption of our sins. And all of us are filthy rags. We are wicked and evil innately. Honestly, we are because we were born into sin. Um, But we're, we're going to be reborn again in Jesus Christ. So 
Okay, that's all for real, y'all. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this speaks to somebody. In the name of Jesus, I'm sorry I didn't pray beforehand, but I thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for everything you do and have done for us. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We are so thank you, thankful for who you are and for what you have done in our lives and for what you're going to continue to do. So again, thank you guys. I love you all who are watching and we'll talk next time. Bye.